Opening up the Tascam 688, stage one, we're going to remove the side panels. There's one, two screws, and then I kind of um, circle it about metal tab guy. I'll show you one side, but you do need to do both. Oh, stuff falling over. Couple of big old screws. So you can see there's a tab, that one goes in first, and then you can sort of get these guys to line up here. I've only done that once before, so I'm giving you quite a vague description, but it involves a certain amount of shuggling. Next we need to remove this front uh, rubberized wrist rest panel. So I'll go off camera and flip this enormously heavy beast onto its front. Make sure you're doing that on a soft surface. I've got this thick foam set up on my work surface for that purpose. Okay, I've removed that. What that required was one, two, three screws to be removed there. Also, there's a hole through here and that goes down into a recess here. So these screws also need to be loosened through that hole and that loosens the grip on little tabs in here. Next thing to do is behind the LED panel, this metal panel that sits over the top of the various access points and inputs. There's one, two, three, four screws. These two are of the type where it's, there's a lip and then a round dome. And these are the just the kind of standard looking button shaped ones, I'll say for want of a better expression. Then there's an additional one, two, three screws at on the back panel here that need to be removed to get that plate off. Now I've removed those, this panel just lifts off. This part of the case is split into two halves. There's the mixer part, you can see the line dividing it there. And then this section is what we're going to remove because it's the cassette drive and pitch board that I'm trying to get out. There's one, two, three, four, five, six screws to come off here. Additionally, it's kind of difficult to see. There's two screws in here. This is like the 464, the 488 Mark 1. These are all contemporaries of this model of Tascam where there were a different size of screw inside here to hold that bit of plastic against the transport inside. So keep them safe. Finally, take the pitch control knob off before you lift this so you don't lose it. And uh, remove it gently because it's attached by a whole bunch of wires. There's some evidence in here that someone previous to me had had a bit of a medal in here. So do keep your own records, make your own photographs of this as you're deconstructing it. But the way mine's plugged in, we've got a grey wire. I'm not sure where that's going. Here, the black cable here. White, red, white here. Looks like we've got an earth wire going to point with another earth down here. It's going from the LED indicator through to this pitch control board here. All right, I'll detach those and see where we are. Okay, that came away without me needing to unplug anything I hadn't already mentioned to unplug the output from the records and playback head and the erase head. I'm going to need to open up this mixer section. One, two, three, four, five. Looks like there's spaces for one, two, three screws here, but they're not present. So five screws at least I'm going to need to remove. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to remove this earth connection and at least loosen these tabs. Okay, that's it open. I need to remove this plate in order to get it, the plugs for this transport. Four screws later and I'm into this rat's nest. The complexity of this kind of makes me feel a bit ill. Now I'll just trace these wires from the heads and unplug the relevant plugs. 16 unplugs later, it's uh, everything coming from the heads I think. And those wires will just um, bring you through here. In terms of how this is attached, looks like we've got one, two, three screws. 
still attached this kind of earth wire connecting it to this mega control board. The earth has been removed now. I'm going to unplug these one, two, three cables that are associated with the transport. I think this will be the last thing, but there's a black plug and this pitch control board down at the bottom. Free at last! Now I'm going to remove this pitch board, which I'm also sending to this other fella that's got one of these with a complementary set of strengths and faults. Looks like there's two screws at the bottom. So there's two plugs here that need to come out. It joins onto this mecha control board here, that needs to come off, and then I would only be able to desolder that, so I'm just going to unscrew this little board here. I assume that that's master pitch control and your slow speed and your high speed, and that it's accessible through holes through the side panel. And there we go, everything's out. So I already changed the capstan belt on this, if I remember it's this screw, and this screw allowed this plate to come off, and then you could slip the belt underneath and around the capstan motor here, and around that flywheel, and then just reattach that plate. So, if you've watched any of my other videos, you I hope you find them a bit more detailed and a bit more high energy than this. You can probably tell that I feel a bit overwhelmed by this. A lot of the times when I'm making these videos, I'm making them in machines that I've worked on, you know, at least three or four times. I've got a broad understanding of what's going on, but the extra digital systems, the fact that it's 8-track, it's so huge, it weighs a lot, all the extra plates and everything in here, kind of feel like I'm wading through syrup, even just unscrewing this and getting these bits out. But hopefully that was somewhat helpful to someone else who's for whatever reason, needs to remove that. I will say as well, if you're just going to change the belt, you don't need to do this bit where you removed that plate and took all these cables out. You could put bubble wrap on top of there and just lean it there with all those cables still going through this recess and attached to this board. You wouldn't need to remove that board. I'm only sending that to my friend because he thinks he has a problem with this board, so I'm giving him both parts, both of which I've established 99% you know, that they work well. See you next time for slightly more enthusiastic and less lost sounding narrator.